Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Jeremy Scott Fitness Podcast or Radio Show. Coming to you on this Sunday, November the 19th, 2023. Hopefully it finds you staying safe and staying sweaty all at the same time. On today's episode, we are talking facts about body fat. Uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly. The good fat, the bad fat. Uh, can you be too lean? Can you be too big? Uh all the functions of fat on the body and what they do and how we, we tend to vilify it, even though uh, some of it is very beneficial and, dare I say, essential uh, to life. There's essential proteins, there's essential fats, there are no essential carbohydrates. That is not my opinion. These are just facts of life. Like, Michael Jordan is the greatest basketball player of all time. Some things are just facts, you guys. Anyways, that is what we're talking about today. I'm playing off of an awesome little piece from our homies over at Precision Nutrition. Uh, Alyssa Bowman, Brian St. Pierre, and, and Eric Helms uh, have put this together. They put it together. I believe Eric Helms actually uh, reviewed it. They do great work over there. Uh, if you're talking, you know, the best in the biz in terms of nutritional education for fitness pros, uh, it's hard to fuck with them, man. And I've had uh, Dr. John Berardi here on the podcast. I think it's one of the top five uh, most listened to uh, episodes. He's a wealth of knowledge. Uh, he started that bad boy over there, sold it for like $100 million or something crazy. And uh, they do good work. Um, I'll say that. So we're going to play off of what they do. Um, just talking about, you know, too much body fat does affect overall health, but not in the ways many people think. And that is today's episode. Uh, full disclaimer, just wrapped up our Sunday events Metcon, <clears throat> excuse me, and I still have this Metcon cough, but it's like this dry cough from whatever the fuck is going on in the world. If anybody else out there has had a, had a cough or a cold or, or been sick for 10 days or more, you're not alone, my friends. Um, maybe it's because my body fat's too low. Who knows? We'll talk about it. Um, but it's just been nagging, and, and it's a pain in my ass. And so if I cough a couple times, I apologize. I'm trying to get you guys out the best stuff I can. Um, obviously, today's workout did not help my cause at all. But here we are. So a couple housekeeping things before I get into the nuts and bolts. One, the microdosing mobility program is live inside the app right now. Uh, Monday, the 20th, is the first start date. But you have access to week number one right now. So if you're in the app, it's in there. Just pull down, refresh. It should be the first program that's loaded. Everybody else, if you want to jump in, jeremyscuffinus.app. The link's in the, the show notes here. You get a week for free. Stand for a couple of pennies. It's a microdosing mobility program. It's five minutes every single day for 32 days of mobility. It'll help you move better and feel better. It's something everybody should do. You can always be more mobile. It's just like, you know, you can always have more money. You can always be more good looking. You can always be stronger. You can always have better sex. You know what I'm saying? Like there's just things that in abundance are not bad. And I don't think strength in abundance is bad. I don't think having a, a set of skills in abundance is bad. And that's the way I feel about mobility. Uh, we're all getting older. You know, and if we don't, you know, fight father time, uh, he's going to get us a lot quicker than we want in terms of our range of motion. Um, and it's going to diminish our skills. The things that we love to do and want to do, they're going to be taken away from us basically just due to inactivity um, and aging. And you don't have to live in, in chronic pain. You don't have to be stiff and tight and sore all the time. You know, I would urge everybody to do this who's listening. And there is a lot of you who listen to this and listen to me talk. Uh, I'm not, again, I, I'm going to make four cents off you doing this program. I'm, I'm making no money from it, essentially. Uh, it doesn't even cover the cost of us paying people to do it, but I give a fuck about it. That's why I'm talking about it the way that I do. So join it, do it five minutes a day. You'll be so much better at the end of 32 days than you are at day number one. And a lot of these are a set of skills you can take with you for the rest of your life. So do it. I promise you guys it's worth the five minute investment. There's probably nothing else you're doing each day. That's a better investment of time than this will be. So Jeremy's got finished that app. It's in there. Boom. Check it out. Do it with me every day. And we're talking about AG1. Um, again, you guys know I take it every day. Um, it's the best tasting nutritional supplement that I have taken. It's easy. It's quick. It's fast. Uh, it replaced my multivitamin about seven years ago. Um, and it's not just a multivitamin. I think sometimes people think that, and it, it certainly isn't just a, a drink you take. A, it has uh, all the micronutrients you need, so it, A, is a multivitamin, but 
prebiotics, probiotics, digestive enzymes to help gut support, magnesium, B vitamins for energy, adaptogens to balance the body's stress levels, vitamin C, zinc, you name it, all the things to kind of help your immune health. And so if you're looking for something that's an easy health hack, drinkag1.com slash Jeremy Scott will give you guys a year's supply of free vitamin D and five free travel packs with order one. If you want to try a free sample, 100% for free, no questions asked. You've heard other people talk about it, maybe on a podcast, maybe you saw a commercial, you heard one of your friends take it, reach out to me. I will send the packs right to your front door. Monica literally will box them up here in this facility, ship them to your house. You can try it. If you like it, you get hooked up with all the free shit from there. No questions asked. Is anybody else sending you guys free shit? No, we're not asking you for any money, nothing. We just need your mailing address, and you guys will get it. And again, I think it's the best tasting. It's an easy thing to add into your morning routine, your nightly routine. I typically take it before uh, my first meal. I slam it, and I'm good to go. I never make an excuse not to take it. The travel packs go with me everywhere. It's easy. Um, and again, it, next to doing mobility, it, it, honestly, it's easier than mobility because it's not as painful. Um, and I think it tastes good. So hit me up if you want a free sample. Otherwise, drinkag1.com slash Jeremy Scott will get you a one-year supply of free vitamin D3 and K2, which you should already be taking, and five free travel packs with order number one. Links in the show notes for all that. Otherwise, hit me up for the free sample today. All the other sponsors are going to put in the show notes. Our friends at dryfarmwines.com slash Jeremy Scott Fitness. Get a bottle of wine. Get the next bottle for a penny. Again, natural wine. It's an awesome holiday gift. Um, and if you guys are going to drink booze, obviously do it in a smart, responsible way. Uh, our friends at Sleep Sold Separately, we're getting my joggers, my hoodies, and all of my gear. And my peeps at JLab Pro, jeremyscottfitness.jlabpro.com for our protein, turmeric, collagen, and curl oils. I've known Jay for a decade. I trust him. I work with him. This is all the stuff we take at our house. If you guys want a free supplement guide from us, it's in the app, and I'm happy to send it to you outside of the app as well if you want to get down with all of those things. <clears throat> Excuse me. The only other thing I think uh, Dave DiLorenzo and I's uh, Built Different Mastermind Group is kicking off here uh, in January. Um, email is going to go out probably today or tomorrow to all the applicants, anybody who is, uh, you know, legit ready to pull the trigger. We'll do a, a welcome call before Christmas time, uh, get you guys in the Facebook group, uh, get you oriented, um, kind of with the workbook and the modules and what we have coming down the pipe. And, uh, we'll hit the ground running, uh, January 1st, help you guys, you know, not just build uh, a business you want, um, but build a life you want. And I think that's the most important thing. And that's all the pillars uh, physical, mental, spiritual, emotional, obviously financial is a huge part of that. Um, we're going to focus on everything. We're going to surround you with, with a group of awesome people. I have an awesome network. Dave has an awesome network. We cross-pollinate on some of those, and you guys will get access uh, to all that stuff, which is going to be cool. And honestly, um, I'm not trying to push you guys into it. If you're entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, you work in corporate America, whatever it may be, uh, take what you want, leave the rest. But for me buying like uh, just training modules early on and then uh, investing in these things and investing at first I would do it in training modules then I would do it in workshops and conferences and eventually I pulled the trigger I joined a mastermind group and was it expensive yeah it was um, and it was not always convenient for me um, mine would meet in Louisville Kentucky so I was part of this group uh, a bunch of savages. A lot of these guys, I, I'm still friends with. I'm, I'm friends with them all, right? I'm, but I'm, a lot of them I'm still in contact with today, um, like frequently. And if I need something, I'll get it from them. And if they need something from me, they'll get it from me. And that's something that we built. I was in this group for like just over two years, um, and it, it did cost me money for sure. But my business, uh, revenue-wise, I think by the time I started to finish, uh, over doubled. Probably almost tripled, if I'm being honest. Now, there's a lot of factors that go into that, but iron sharpens iron, and standing on the shoulders of giants really helped me, and having people walk me through stuff, and just listening to what other people were doing in their business, even if it wasn't perfect for me, there's things I could beg, borrow, and steal, and they could do for myself, but the biggest thing was I could lean on guys who have already made multiple millions of dollars, and now if I needed somebody to do any JV stuff, joint venture stuff with me, um, I could do it. If somebody else created a product or a program, I could take a look at it. We could kind of um, 
trade best practices and we could work with each other. And that's what the group did for me. And that's what um, I'm now in a position to be able to give back to other people and do that as well. And so is Dave. And so that's what the group is a part. So if you're in a business and it's not where you want it to be, um, I think we can help you get there. Uh, I built this from nothing with no clients, no money, no resources. And uh, Dave did it uh, very similar, uh, just in a different industry. And we both kind of uh, scaled it up and uh, here we are. So that is coming as well. If you guys are interested, the link's in the show notes for that. But without further ado, talking body fat, kids. Um, what everybody needs to know about body fat is the original article over at PN. Um, and again, just talking about too much body fat does affect your overall health, but not in the ways that you think. And um, again, I, I'm, I'm going to say a couple of things as we kick off. Uh, and then I'm going to kind of just dig down into the, the basics for you. But when it comes to body fat, the truth, um, it's nuanced, like anything is, um, and it's individualized, for sure. Um, and that's all I want to say before I kick off and, and acknowledge a few things. One, I don't care what shape you're in. This is your life. You do what you want. I'm Obviously, I live in America. Uh, I, I've been to multiple other countries. Uh, we do a lot of things right. And we do a lot of things wrong as well. Um, I do like here, um, you have the freedom to drink what you want, eat what you want, and, and go where you want, and, and basically do whatever the fuck you want to do with, with your body for the most part, as long as you're not affecting and hurting other people. So there's no judgment here. Anything I say today, I'm not judging, I'm not shaming, I don't care. If you are 400 pounds and you are happy, that is awesome. My wife can vouch for this if she was here. Monica, who sits across from me, um, I say this all the time, almost to end every conversation we have, I'm happy for you if you're happy. At the end of the day, that's all I want for people is, is to be healthy and to be happy. Whatever that looks like for you, that's great. So I don't care if you're lean or obese, it's on you. Now, what is healthy and what is happy sometimes are the same and sometimes they are not. But just know, fat and how it affects people, how we carry it, um, what it does to us, how it looks on us is nuanced and it's individualized for sure. And like most health topics, the connection between body fat and overall health, it's complex. You know, um, as your body fat level tends to rise for most people, um, once it's past the point of being healthy, you're at risk for developing certain metabolic diseases. That's not my opinion. That's just the science. And at the same time, you can get healthier without losing body weight or losing body fat, just as you can if you lose weight and you lose body fat without getting healthier. They, they both work the same. Now, there's a, there's a point of diminishing returns in that, and there's a point of, well, yeah, you are uh, 400 pounds and you're, you're five foot six. That's probably not ideal. And so, obviously, though the weight stigma is a real thing. Uh, it's rampant in American culture. It's rampant in the fitness and nutrition industry for sure. And that's because I, I think a lot of it is this kind of anti-fat bias that body fat um, is, is always bad. And that's not always the case. Um, I think a lot of times we, we see things from afar. You see a, a larger person and you stereotype and you say, well, they're lazy, they're weak, they're lacking willpower, and you know they're just, they're ignorant, they're not educated. And Sometimes, yeah, people are lazy, um, and sometimes people do lack willpower, and they are uh, uneducated. But a lot of times, that's not the whole picture, and to look at somebody and just judge them from afar is, it's fucked up, it's hurtful, it's wrong. Um, it gets in the way of what really might be going on, and it's always like, you know, don't judge a book by its cover. And that person you see that's, you know, 80 pounds overweight might have been 150 pounds overweight at one point. They're just, they're not even remotely close to being done with their fat loss journey. Makes sense what it's saying? Or they might have been in a horrific car accident or they just went through chemotherapy or you name it. Well, we do that though. We look at people and we judge, you know, your body is your business card. I get it. And sometimes things just don't go your way, whether it be genetics or luck or an accident or timing, you name it, circumstance, situation, 
there's a lot of factors that go into it. So just because you see somebody who is like physically looks good, it doesn't mean they're healthy. And just when you see someone who you think physically doesn't look attractive, doesn't mean they're unhealthy. Hopefully that makes sense what I'm saying here. And I never judge. It's not for me to do. That's for God and whoever else. And I also know you don't know what people are carrying through their day, right? And I think this goes for everybody and everything. And this is a side note um, on top of just, you know, uh, fit shaming and fat shaming and both things obviously do exist. Or when you see someone driving a, you know, a brand new G-Wagon, oh, they're rich and successful. If you, if you guys are beyond the age of 16 and you've lived anywhere and ever talked to a real person, you know that sometimes it's true. And a lot of times that's not true. You know, what you see is not always what you get. And what I say, you don't know what other people are carrying. I don't know when someone walks in here and they're not super fit and mobile. I don't know what they've just been through. If they're coming back from an injury, if they're coming back from uh, a car accident, if they have the loss of a loved one or a child and they turn to food or drink or Maybe they have this uh, autoimmune disease, you name it, but we see something and we just say, oh, that person's lazy. That that is not the case. Every single one of us, me included, we're all carrying things with us through our life from things that have happened to us, around us, and the people to us. And those things do add up over time. And sometimes it manifests itself on your physical body one way or another. So I'm just throwing that out there. That's why I'm Obviously, when you see someone, you know, who's physically, mentally, spiritually, and emotionally happy and fit, for sure, then you know. But a lot of times you don't get that by just seeing somebody at the airport or seeing somebody at the grocery store. Now, albeit, there are a lot of people out there who just choose to say, fuck it, and they don't even try. And that's a different thing, too. So both things do exist. I'm not making excuses for people. I just know... What you see is not always what you get, and a lot of times there's layers um, to people because we're all, you know, as as basic as we are, um, life is complex. Life is messy at times, and uh, it can show up in our physical body, in our in our our, our physical health, um, your your emotional health, um, and your mental health for sure. And you know, the stigma um, of the weight stuff, like if you're big, you're unhealthy, fat and lazy. And if you're smaller and skinnier, you're just healthy, you give a shit, and you're smart, it's not true. And that stigma doesn't help anybody. Uh, For some people, uh, if you're talking like the David Goggins type shit, um, you know, I can probably shame myself into doing things, you know, Um, and I can talk real negative about myself and I can use that as motivation. I know my wife can, um, a lot of people can, but I don't think shame for most people is a, a healthy motivator. Um, for individuals or or society um, at large, I think rather than you know helping with you know fat loss and getting people motivated, um, the shaming for a lot of people this I'm I'm fat I'm lazy I'm stupid you start to believe that story you tell yourself and it starts to be associated with um, disordered eating emotional eating um, increased calorie intake. Uh, you don't value yourself, your self-worth is nowhere it needs to be, and you kind of get in this yo-yo um, aspect of it. So I'm not a huge fan of, of negative self-talk. Some people use it. Um, I'm just being honest. Uh, I do sometimes. You know, But that's what I need. That's the school I grew up in. I'm not saying for you guys to do that. Um, but I will sit here sometimes and have a conversation with myself for, for 10, 15 minutes and be like, hey, man, stop being a lazy piece of shit and get up and get moving. And it might be mental, it might be physical, or it might be both. That works for me. I am not suggesting you do that. And if you are coaching someone, do not do that to them. Everybody has their own button that they need to push uh, for themselves. And everybody is worthy of respect, you know. Uh, I think, like I mentioned earlier, you're allowed to love yourself uh, no matter uh, your body size. Um, And you can pursue health-related activities, um, with nutrition, with your fitness, with your sleep, with your recovery, <clears throat> without wanting to change your body, if you don't want to. Again, it's yours. Do with it what you like. But we're going to talk about body fat here. And just as we can, 
we should talk about it. It's a real thing. You know, um, I've heard some of this stuff where these people will go to the doctor now and uh, the, if they don't want to get weighed, they don't have to get weighed. I, I'm not a huge fan of that. A, I don't think the scale's a great uh, a metric or measure of health. But it, like I mentioned, if I go into the doctor and I, and I go from a 198 pounds to 266 pounds in a year, something's wrong, right? Like if I go in there at six foot two and I'm 206 versus 306, that, that's a conversation we have to have with their healthcare professional because that is that much more weight on my ankles, on my knees, on my hips. I got, I got ankles of a, a seven-year-old girl. That says shit can't not support 300 pounds. My heart has to pump that much more blood, that much harder each and every day. So we should talk about our, our weight in a healthy way. We should talk about body fat in a healthy way, just as we do with cholesterol, with blood pressure, and all the other health topics. Knowing the truth about body fat is going to give you an education uh, and a wisdom to make important health decisions. And I'm just going to go through this basic kind of infographic. I'll put a, a a note here when I send this out on the newsletter if you guys want to access it just to look at it. Um, I'm going to talk slow here so you can get the basics of it. And it's not real complex, but I think sometimes we just, again, I'm in the health and fitness space, so I'm going to preface it that way. I came up in fitness in the, I'm in magazines, I'm on bodybuilding.com, I'm on men's health, uh, I'm working with, you know, muscle and fitness and doing the things, and, and a lot of it is based on how I look. That's That was my reality in fitness, uh, still is. A 40-year-old man, um, still like to think I'm fit and healthy. People, you know, it, we we sexualize fitness for sure. But I came up in the space of, you know, uh, competing in physique and, and bodybuilding stuff. And that's kind of how I got my first uh, supplement sponsorship and, uh, and doing photo shoots and video shoots. And they use your image uh, to sell products. That's what we do. And in that ecosystem... Um, or subculture of fitness, if you will, you can have abs and quote unquote, still be fat, right? As fucked up as that sounds. And you can have abs and, and be quote unquote, out of shape or not in condition. And that's, it's fucking insane, you guys, but that was the reality. In a lot of that world, it still kind of is because we're talking extremes. Um, uh, I've shared the story before. I'll share it one more time. I remember competing um, with a guy named Skip Wood. Skip to this day, Skip is older than me. Um, Skip is super fit still to this day. Looks great. Skip was a guy who did a lot of fitness modeling early on for the hydroxy cut um, advertisements. And I remember competing with him, being backstage, and you know we're hungry, we're dehydrated, we're shredded. We look great. Um, and you're just kind of passing the time before you go on stage. And I remember him seeing somebody eating an apple and he looked at me and he tapped me and he goes, can you imagine putting that much sugar in your body at one time? And I just, I sat there and I'm like, in my head, I'm like, man, that's so fucked up. Right? Like, and did I agree with him? Yeah. In that setting for sure. But I'm sitting there thinking, like, man, that's so fucked up. We're talking about eating an apple like it's a bad thing. Um, because, again, you're doing this really extreme thing, which, is it healthy? No. Is it safe? Yeah, we weren't going to die. But that was the the fucked up thought process in that subculture of fitness. And I've had Ashley Weens on the podcast here before, and she talked about, you know, hey, when she was on her, you know, food prep, she's an IFBB pro uh, for a female super lean, uh, I'm going to miss, I don't know the exact year she said on the podcast. If you go back and listen to the episode, she'll say it. I don't think she had a period for like like five years because she was so lean and her hormones were so fucked up because they weren't, you know, manufacturing things properly. And it just, it her period stopped because she was so, <clears throat> excuse me, shredded. And she talked about being on uh, her, her meal prep and her coach was like, you can have an apple. And she would go to Fry's, look at the apples. And then she'd go to Safeway, look at the apples. She'd go to Whole Foods, look at the apples. 
because she was trying to find the biggest apple possible. Because it was before we're talking about measuring grams, which is the, the proper way to do it. Her coach is just like, you can have an apple. And because her she's in this place mentally in her head, this disordered eating, she is looking for the biggest apple possible because that's just what she's been looking forward to all week in terms of her meal prep. And I share all that because that, my friends, is extreme. That's where you're, you're so lean, you're becoming unhealthy. That's where it's why I say when you look at somebody, you can't always judge a book by its cover. We used to joke, uh, my buddy Dave Dries and I, Dave's been on the cover of uh, Iron Man Magazine. Uh, he's been on a bunch of covers. Him and I worked together at Reebok for a long time. He worked in this business. He ran Arizona Training Lab. Uh, he's a beautiful human. I've known him since I was, you know, I think 10 years old and he was eight. Uh, we would talk about like just how extreme it would be and the worse you felt, the better you looked in the images. Because you got to understand, you're completely depleted, um, you're dehydrated, but then you slightly rehydrate with carbohydrates, a little sugar, get a little bit of salt, get a pump going, you got a spray tan, you're flexed, you're moved, the lighting is perfect, the shadows are on you, boom, you look fucking awesome. But you feel like a bag of shit. That's not healthy either. Somewhere in the middle is where most of us need to lie. And that's why I share that. And I live in a good space now of, of how I feel and how I move at 40 years old. Um, when I was younger, obviously I was bigger um, and not as lean as I live today, but I would get leaner in moments. Um, I don't know if that was the healthiest thing. I feel better now at this point. My body's found kind of its natural um, standing point. And that's what I want to touch on real quick is just your body wants to be where it wants to be. I'm not saying you can't change it. But if I said I need to be 220 pounds today at 40 years old with my frame, that's not realistic. It's just not. I, I could be 220, but I would have to get substantially, um, I guess, fatter, if you will, because this level of conditioning at this age for me just, just doesn't exist. You know what I'm saying? And so if you're a person who's naturally 200 pounds, but you want to be 170, you're fighting every single day to be there. And I'm not saying you can't change where you're at, but there's a healthy place, probably somewhere in the middle for most of us. And that's the truth about body fat. You know, we can't villainize it, which we do. Um, and other people will say body fat levels aren't, you know, indicative of overall health. But the reality is going to be somewhere in between, you know, versus body fat is trash versus if you have this level, it's healthy. And we're all going to be a little bit different. And I'm going to just touch on the basics here for all of you. One, the reality is body fat serves a purpose. It has a lot of roles. And some body fat, a certain level for each of us, is essential for optimal health. Like I mentioned earlier, there's essential proteins that you need in your life. There's essential fats you need in your life. This is just, if you don't get them, you're probably going to get sick and die. And bad things are going to happen. It's just, that's the truth. Body fat um, is actually an organ, right? And so what does it do? Body fat stores energy. It keeps you warm. Um, so albeit, um, if you're on the leaner side, you're probably colder um, than someone who has much more body fat. Uh, you probably can do these desert walks like BJ Ghidorah and myself um, have done if I was you know, 40 pounds heavier and mostly body fat, I think I would overheat a little bit quicker than I do now, or I wouldn't freeze my dick off um, like I do most places. And I wear pants and a hoodie almost all the time. Um, that's just me. When you're living lean, that's just the truth. So I don't have as much to keep me warm. So if we get in some kind of like Leonardo DiCaprio, you know, revenant scenario where I'm out in the wilderness, I'm probably the first fucking dude who's dead, right? But body fat does keep you warm. Um, it does store energy, it cushions your internal organs, and it helps manufacture hormones. I think that's the big one for most people. It does help with your hormone balance. I might touch on this later on, but I'm going to say it now before I forget. If you're somebody who's like, you know, in fitness, right, and you're competing or you're getting on stage and you're getting extremely lean, if you're not on like some type of androgens, some kind of like exogenous hormones, uh, testosterone or estrogen or 
um, HGH or steroids or something, if you're naturally doing it, the, if you get to a certain point of being lean, it's going to fuck with your hormones and it's going to make them, it's basically going to tank them if you live too lean for too long. I've experienced it. Most people who compete have experienced it unless you're on a bunch of drugs. And even for those guys, I think it probably can fuck with them. So that's just the truth. Fat does help with hormones. Um, different types of fat perform different types of functions. Some of you know this, some of you don't. White fat um, is the most abundant type of fat in the body. And it also acts as a, like an endocrine organ. Um, it stores energy generates hormones, and compounds like leptin, if you guys are familiar. Now, pink fat, for example, during pregnancy for females, uh, and lactation uh, for some uh, breast fat converts into pink fat, which produces and releases breast milk. That's what pink fat does. Not a concern for me. Uh, beige fat. Uh, when you're exposed to sustained cold temperatures, like if you live in beautiful Minnesota, all my people in the Midwest out there. Um, some white fat cells turn beige. These cells store energy like white fat does, but can also burn energy like brown fat. And that's the last one here. Brown fat, this fat creates heat by breaking down sugars and fatty acids, which regulates blood sugar and increases metabolism. Exercise increases brown fat. So active people tend to have more of this, people who train and actually physically do stuff versus people who just sit on their ass. The second truth here, um, we touched on this, you can't look at somebody's body and guess their health status. Now, this is as true for physical as it is for mental. It really is. Um, it's why I say, try to give people the benefit of the doubt. You don't know what they're carrying. And just because somebody looks fit and looks healthy and looks happy... It doesn't mean they are. There, there's plenty of days, you guys, where I've come in here and I've given my best to everybody and just have felt physically like shit. Felt tired. Felt exhausted. Felt run down. There's days I've come in here and mentally just not been in, in a good place. You know, stressed, worried, anxiety, whatever the fuck it is. I'm a human. I, I feel the same shit you guys all feel. And I can promise you when I come in here, these guys don't know. Oh, Jeremy's just doing another thing. He's just on a, he's on his normal every day is good day. That's not true. Everybody can't have good days every day. Like you're gonna have some shit days. And I would say, like, I was not the epitome of health on those days. That's why you can't just look at somebody and say, Oh, that person should crush, that person should do this, because it's not always true. There's all different body types and there's all different stages. It's like the I always use the NBA, right? Like when you see do like here's my, here's my prime example right now. I don't mean career and overall. I mean right now today on the planet, who is the best basketball player who is alive? You can argue, but it's probably Jokic from the Nuggets. Now when you look at Jokic, I don't know if he can do a fucking pull up. I don't know if this man he is a big, kind of sloppy looking. A little bit soft, giant, like Russian white dude. And if you put him, like just put him in shorts, no shirt on, right next to LeBron, right next to Giannis, and you said, pick which guy is the is the better, like is the better basketball player, you would not pick him. I mean, it wouldn't be fucking close. So it's like you look at him like, well, but he can move well. He understands his body. Aerobically, he's fit. He is strong. It's just he doesn't look the part. And that's the best example I can give. There's a lot of guys in the NBA who went like that, where you would see like, like a Tony Parker. You're like, how is this fucking dude so fast? Luka Doncic, same thing. Like, he, he, doesn't, he doesn't look like an Adonis, right? Like Vlade Divac, Zach Randolph. If you guys know basketball, you know what I'm talking about. Like sometimes they just don't look like the best athletes in the world, yet they are. I've talked about this before. I, I've been running. I did Pat's run, and I'm running at a, at a good clip, and I'm moving, and all of a sudden I see this dude pass me. Um, and this run is outside, by the way, uh, on the streets of Scottsdale and Tempe. 
And this dude passes me, 20 pounds overweight with no shoes on. Almost like I'm standing still. And if you would have put us in just shorts and had our clothes off and said, which person here is faster in a five-mile race, you probably all would have picked me. And this dude fucking smoked my ass. That's what I mean. You can't look at somebody's body and just guess their health status. No, sometimes, yeah. But a lot of times you can't. Metabolic health tends to drop as your body fat level rises, which we mentioned earlier. But fat location and muscle to fat ratio both matter. Someone may appear thinner, right? Again, at one point in my life, um, I between playing college sports and before really, really getting into to fitness and nutrition, I had a little gap of probably three months of like my mini retirement of being skinny fat, right? And so for me, I was lacking muscle and just storing excess amounts of fat and even, you know, becoming deconditioned. And so what I'm driving at is somebody can appear thin and they may lack muscle and they may store excess fat in their liver um, or near their heart or deep down in their abdomen. And these fat deposits are associated with things like elevated insulin, glucose, cholesterol, and blood pressure. Not good. That's not healthy. Even though you look skinny or you look thin, or you look smaller, you are not healthy. It just doesn't look like that on the outside. Conversely, a larger body person may be more metabolically healthy than the skinny counterpart. This is just genetics, my friends. I can eat a whole pizza. Doesn't really change how I look, even at 40 years old. I got friends, if they eat a, a slice or two of pizza, they gain 10 pounds. This is just fucking genetics. This is life. This is reality. We do the best we can with what we got. I got certain gifts in my life genetically, and I got fucked in some other ways, just like you did and everybody else did listening. And so understand, just because somebody's bigger doesn't mean that they're not metabolically healthy. There's a tipping point, obviously, of course. Regular activity, more muscle may improve your insulin sensitivity keep your excuse me, blood pressure and inflammation and cholesterol in check. Again, even sometimes people who are a little bit bigger and they're aerobically fit and they're strong, like you work out with them and they just beat your fucking ass like aerobically and they don't look like they can or they're just strong as an ox and you don't think they can, they might have mostly like subcutaneous fat. This is the pinchable uh, surface level fat that poses much fewer health risks than fat that's located somewhere uh, viscerally um, or in your liver, for example. Um, they may have normal amounts of visceral or liver fat, reducing their risk of diseases associated with you know, um, these high inflammatory fat deposits like a skinny person could have. Hopefully, you follow me here. The point is, you can be thin and be unhealthy. You can be a bigger body person and be super fucking healthy. This is just the truth. Again, there's tipping points on both ends. The next one, which I mentioned here, too much or too little body fat brings risks. It's just the truth. Now, in general, if you're talking BMI, body mass index, if it's less than 18 or more than 30, the risks kind of tend to go up. It's not, there's not a steadfast rule. We're all individuals. Um, I remember for me, uh, getting uh, life insurance uh, years and years ago, they would have uh, an issue when I would call in because I would, at the time, I'm six foot two, I'm over 220 pounds. This is like probably peak, peak me, right? Um, In terms of muscle density um, and being lean, I'm probably 30, you know, one or, or two years old, And they're like, you know, you're overweight, essentially, uh, for uh, how tall you are. Now, it's not true, I go, but how they're measuring it is true. And so, again, that's why I say you can live outside the ranges. There's always going to be freaks. and There's always going to be people who don't fit the mold. But in general, if your body mass index is less than 18 and more than 30, your your health risks tend to go up. And so if you have a low BMI, right, like really low, um, and again, if you're a person who... Say, say they live at low body fat all the time and like, like 
ridiculously low, and I'll go over the numbers here in a minute, it can put you at risk for the ability to fight infections. So I do think um, I'm on the leaner side. If I do... If I do get sick, um, like a cold or whatever, like what I caught a couple weeks ago, I do work in a gym. I do work with hundreds of people a week. I got a bunch of kids in here touching stuff, moving stuff, and uh, I'm just around a lot of humans. That's part of it. But, hey, if my body fat is too low, maybe that's a reason um, why I couldn't have fought it off versus something else. And sometimes shit just gets you, right? Um, You can have reduced sex hormones. So if you're insanely lean, your sex drive can go to shit. So you can have like low libido. Um, you can have uh, erectile dysfunction for people. You can not have a period, like I mentioned. You can lose bone mass, um, which puts you at an increase for fractures, um, even infertility for a lot of people. Again, I've had many women on the podcast who've competed who did not have periods for many, many years, not having kids in, in that span. This is not going to happen. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's not going to happen. If you're a dude who naturally is trying to get their body fat under 5%, the odds of you... Um, having a high libido and a great sex drive, I think is is really rare. Um, I remember the competing days for myself, and uh, you just don't have energy, dude. You just don't have energy. You're literally just you're you look like Skeletor. You know, I'm talking the point where you're so lean, you have you can see the veins, um, and you get the ripples in your ass because your ass is a muscle, and when you flex it, you can really see some of the striations in your butt. That is not a healthy place to be. Um, I never felt good there. Uh, I got fr- friends I can, can attest to it. Heather can attest to it. I was not a, a pleasant person to be around. Again, there is a point of diminishing returns when you're too lean. It just fucks with so many things in your body. Now, on the flip side, if you have a, a high BMI and you're overweight or a high body fat percentage to muscle ratio, it can put you at a risk for a lot of things. Fatty liver disease, high blood pressure insulin resistance, diabetes, inflammation, joint distress, sleep apnea, heart disease, which is the number one killer of people in America, and cancer. Like, that's just the truth. So having too much and too little, neither are good. So where do we want to be? I guess that's the question. Um, There's a lot of numbers. Um, I've done a couple podcasts on this, like what's the cost of being lean and and what it takes. I think the cost of being lean one is probably the best one um, to listen to if you're on a journey. Or I did another one. I think we called it uh, the brutal truths about being ripped and and what it costs you um, physically, uh, mentally, some people emotionally too. But body fat ranges for most people. If you're a female, 20 to 39 years old, a normal range is probably 21% to 32%. We typically tell people here, if you're a female, 20 to 30 is probably the range. But if you want to go with specifics, if you're a female between 20 and 39 years old, if your body fat's between 21 and 32, that's that's like a normal healthy range. Over 33% is high. Over 39% is very high. Under 21%, you're lean as fuck. You're lean, dude. If you're a female, 40 to 59, probably 23 to 33 is kind of normal range. High is over 40. Under 23, you're lean. And if you're 60 to 79, if you're 24 to 35, it's probably the normal range. Uh, high is over 42. Under 24, you're lean. That's it. For So general understanding if I'm going to generalize here and paint with a huge broad brush, if you're a female and your body fat's between 20 and 30, you're probably in a good range. If you're way over 30 and way under 20, depends how you feel. Again, some people naturally are leaner and they feel good. That's just it. You know, the friend you have who's just kind of always ripped until they're not, you know, they get so old where it catches up with them, you hate that fucker. Um, they might feel good there. And then the people who just, they just eat really well, they're, they're trying really hard and their body fat is just, and they're just... They're a little bit just bigger person. Their body fat is 30%, and they feel good there, and they're healthy there. That's cool, too. But those are the numbers. Females, 20 to 30, for the most part, based on age, it goes up or down a couple percentages. If we're talking the, the dudes, if you're a dude um, between 20 and 39 years old, if your body fat is, between, again, uh, normal, 8 to, to 19, 9, or you know, 8 to 20, it's probably the normal range. I think 8 is low. Um, if you're under eight, 
really fucking low. Um, you're lean, dude. You look really good. For dudes, if I generalize, under 10% under, you probably got abs that are really, really defined. Uh, if you're a dude who's like in the you know, 10, 11, 12, you probably got some some watery abs. You can probably see them there some days. Some days maybe you can't, depending on how big a shit you took or what you ate or how much water you drank. But 20 to 39, you guys in the normal range is probably anywhere from 8 to 19. If you're a guy who's 40 to 59, probably 11 to 21, give or take. High would be over 28. Um, if you're a dude who's 20 to 39, high would be over 25. Um, if you're a dude who's 40 years old, if your body fat is under 11, you're in the low body fat range. You're lean. If you're a guy who's 60 to 79, probably 13 to 24, over 30 is high, and uh, under 13 is low. If I generalize here, paint with a broad brush for people, if you're a dude and your body fat's between 10 and 20, you're probably in a good spot. If it's way over 20, might put you at risk. If you're way under 10, same thing. Uh, again, that's just a general number. Some guys who are bigger uh, and have uh, thicker, denser abs, you know, things will show if that's something that's important to you. If you're living way under way under 10%, it's probably, it can be disruptive if that's not genetically and, and naturally who you are. So again, to recap, women, paint with a broad brush here, 20 to 30%. It's probably where you fall to be kind of the healthy normal range. Under that, you're going to be lean. Over that, it could put you at risk. And then if you're a dude, 10 to 20, way under 10, you're lean. Way over 20 could put you at risk. And again, for people who are asking, why are the dudes so much less than the females? Because we are men um, and we have uh, so much testosterone flowing through our bodies, even the dudes who are low, we have way more than women do. And so we tend to naturally carry, not everybody, I'm, in, I'm generalizing here, oh, well, my girlfriend, there's there's girls who are jacked and they're way more muscular than dudes and way stronger than dudes, I get that. But generally speaking, men tend to have more testosterone. They tend to build more muscle on their body and they naturally tend to be about 10% leaner than women on average. So the dude who's at 10% would be like the equivalent to the female who's at 20%, give or take. Now, obviously we can get real specific here, but that is the reality. So I do think the body fat is a better indicator than just the overall weight, but they all play a role. Your weight plays a role. Your body fat plays a role. Your waist to hip ratio, your BMI, your cholesterol, your blood pressure, your happiness, your performance, you name it, it all matters. That's why we can't just look at somebody and say, oh, you're healthy and, and, and you're not healthy because it's more nuanced than that. Now, the other option you can look at is kind of the estimated um, waist to hip ratio. Um, the first measure is for your waist. The next one is for your hips. And then what you do is you divide your waist measurement by your hip measurement. Some of you guys have done this before. Uh, we do measurements here when we do assessments for people who want them. We do the belly button. We do a one inch below. And then we obviously do uh, the hips as well. And so what you do is you measure at the narrowest part of your waist. Usually it's around your belly button for most people. Again, some of us are a little bit different. But what you do is you measure at the narrowest part of your waist, which tends to be at the belly button, and then measure at the widest part of your hips. And again, if you want a little pro tip to get the most accurate measurement, the measuring tape should be snug with no gaps between the tape and your skin, uh, but not so tight that it's cutting into your skin. We actually have these myo tapes here. You can get them on Amazon. They're super cheap. Um, you can do it yourself. So nobody has to do it for you. If you're not comfortable, you can take the tape and it actually has a little clamp that will lock it in the front. It will tell you exactly what it is. And you can do any part of your body by yourself. You can do your calves, you can do your quads, you can do your arms, you can do your neck. It's fucking great. Um, it's fast, it's easy, it's efficient, if you really care. And that's waist to hip ratio. And if we're talking like waist circumference, healthy range for men, below 37 inches. Again, you can have bigger dudes who are bigger. I get that. But for most I, I say I keep prefacing that because I know people get so butt hurt now if we talk fucking shit. Why well, I'm this like, dude, you're an anomaly. You're a unicorn. I get it. For most people, men, the healthy range below 37 inches for your waist. Waist to hip ratio for dudes, 0.95 or below. That's the difference. So the healthy range for a guy, your waist is below 37 inches. The waist to hip ratio below 0.95 or below in terms of the, the inch difference. Um, low health risk. Women, 
31 and a half inches or below. Um, and the waist to hip ratio, 0 0.80 or below for that. That's it. So if you're a dude, waist, 37 inches or less, difference, 0.95. Women, 31.5 inches or below. And then obviously the difference, 0 0.80. Now, if your body fat or your waist to hip ratio is high, keep in mind, there are other things we can measure here too. Your body fat level only represents um, one kind of proxy, I guess, of your metabolic health. Body fat ranges and the risks and benefits associated with them are based on averages. To get information about your health, get your doctor to check your blood pressure. You can do it by yourself. We have a, a cuff at our house. It actually has a Bluetooth that syncs to my phone, so I can do it all the time. My blood pressure at the doctor's office, whether it's my primary person or anybody else I see, whether it's the dentist, uh, the eye doctor, anyone I go to, it's always high in the office. Every fucking time. One, they never put you in a good position. Like that you should be you should be seated in a quiet place, legs uncrossed, at almost 90 degrees, and your arm should be resting on an armrest or a table that is the same level of your heart. At the dentist, they don't do that. They come back. Your blood pressure is high, Jeremy. One, I'm at the dentist. I fucking hate it here. It sucks. And you guys aren't doing it right. But I don't give a shit. Fix my teeth. Keep the shit moving. Same thing at the doctor's office when they have the nurse or the tech come in. They do it. They typically tend to not do it right, too. I am always high. It would, it would seem like I have high blood pressure or some level of hypertension every time I'm there. If I do it at my house, perfect. That's it. I sit on, I sit on this. We have a couch at our house. We have a little end table. All I do is I, I set it down. I put it on. I put my arm on the armrest of the couch. It sits at my heart level. I put it on. I usually check it three times within about three minutes. I'll do one, wait for two minutes, do one, wait for three minutes, do one, wait for two, three minutes, and I'll do it again. 99% of the time, those are money. I go off that number, not what they're telling me at the doctor's office. Again, the thing costs 20 bucks on Amazon. I can send you guys the one I use, but it's great to, to track if you give a shit. So my point is, if your body fat and your waist to hip ratio is not exactly where you want it to be or you're concerned about it, go to your doctor. Have them check and then check it yourself. Have your doctor check your fasting glucose. Have them check your triglycerides. Have them check your cholesterol. Have them pull your hormones. Um, everything. If you want to do renal panels, um, creatinine, EGFR, if you want them to check um, your AST, liver, you name it. Have them just pull everything. Why not? Oh, and again, it's a, and again, don't be freaked out by those numbers. It's just a snapshot of who you are in time. You're not going to be perfect. Some of the things are going to be off. I've had stuff be off on every single metric, you guys. I've seen different specialists because of it. And then I redo the numbers 30 days later, and I'm a completely different person. But I do think it's nice to get a picture if you are concerned because you don't think your body fat and waist to hip or BMI is in the area that you guys like. And again, you don't need to reach the normal or average benefit zones to see significant benefits and improvement in your health. For most people, Losing 5 to 10% of, of your body weight, if you are an overweight person, even if it's not going to get you into the quote-unquote normal ranges, you're going to see improvements in your blood sugar, in your cholesterol, in your blood pressure. Again, for a 250-pound person, we're talking losing 12 to 25 pounds can change your fucking life. If you're somebody who's 250 and you naturally shouldn't be 250 if you lose 12 to 25 pounds, game changer. In everything you do. Um, and also the how you feel. If I had to put on a 25-pound ruck pack, which I walk with that or heavier every day, um, or our hyper vest here that's you know 20 pounds, 25 pounds, and I got to do jumping jacks with that, I got to run around the building with that, I got to do burpees with that or pull-ups with a 20-pound weight vest, it crushes me. As soon as I take it off, I'm a different person. Sometimes 5, 10, 15 pounds for people, even if you're if you were a bigger person makes all the difference in the world. Also, understand extreme diets are going to make this shit worse. Y you know, you've heard me talk about this. Protein, produce, water, wash, rinse, repeat, do things that are sustainable. But when you're starving yourself, it's not healthy, dude. When you're doing these extreme-ass diets, again, if you want to eat... Uh, keto or uh, intermittent fasting or paleo or carb backloading or 
anabolic fasting or whatever it is. Like they all work if if you like it, but you don't have to be crazy extreme. You don't got to do a fucking 90 hour water fast to lose weight. Cause understand sustainability is what we're looking for for most of us for optimal health. And so a lack of protein and a lack of micronutrients can lead to malnutrition. And so you can lose muscle, um, bone loss, ligament issues. Um, when you're really crash dieting, these diets are really fucking hard to maintain. Um, and most people gain the weight back. Finally, extreme dieting um, can erode your mental health and increase your risk of eating disorders, among other things. The way that you see food, think about food, talk about food, albeit watching a person eat an apple when you're competing and thinking that's a crazy amount of sugar to put in your body. That, my friends, is fucking disordered eating. That is fucking mental lunacy at the highest level. I've lived through it and it is fucking nonsense to think you can have abs and still be fat is fucking wild that that exists. And that's the shit that I came up in. And I'm like, this is just not right. I don't run a business that way. That's not how I coach clients that way. I understand it and what they do in that subculture, but that is not ideal or optimal or what people need. So just know these extreme diets they're not sustainable for most people. Um, and a lot of times they, they just make things worse. I know a lot of people have asked me about uh, semi-glutide. Um, well, I think Ozempic is the brand name for people. I've talked about it before on here. Again, uh, for some people, um, if it gets them in the game, they're 300 pounds and this is their jump start. I guess that's what it was designed for uh, to help them. But you still have to fix the underlying problem. You still got to change your eating habits and your drinking habits and your sleeping habits and be more active. I don't know if you're planning on being on on the, the injections and the drugs for your entire life. It seems like that would be um, expensive. I don't know the long-term risks of it or effects, and it seems like it'd be unnecessary. But hey, if that's what people got to do, it's what they got to do. It's not, Again, I'm happy if you're happy. I'm not here at a place of judgment. But I know sometimes doing the extremes people tend to get caught up in that and they abuse it. And when you're doing things, when you're devoid of, of protein and micronutrients and you, and you are malnourished, and then if you're taking um, injections to speed up the process and make your body feel a certain way, you're going to lose fat for sure, but you're going to lo lose muscle. Um, there can be bone loss there. There can be a loss of connective tissue there. So it's like when you're losing weight, you're not just losing fat. I think a lot of times people think that you're going to lose everything. Everything comes. You don't just lose body fat. You lose muscle too. Like that will happen for a lot of people, especially when you go extreme and you are malnourished. You are losing muscle tissue and connective tissue that you cannot afford to lose. At least that's what we've seen. Also for people, um, they make their biggest physical um, health improvements through indirect methods. What do I mean by that? Some of the biggest changes you can make in your body are going to happen in ways you don't think they're going to happen. Um, decreasing your stress is a huge one. Getting more quality sleep can regulate your appetite, reduce your cravings, and improve your overall health. People who need it um, to seek, you know, whether it's psychological counseling um, or being part of a community and a friend and have a great resource group um, or a great coach, they tend to keep the weight off longer than the people who just focus on this extreme nutrition and the extreme exercise alone. And just know body fat is one small piece of a complex health puzzle. I think at this point of hearing me ramble on for an hour, you guys understand that all of the things I'm going to mention here real quick before we go are factors that are just important in terms of overall health. Body fat matters, yes, we've talked about that, but what else matters? Your sleep matters. I can attest to this. I have had bouts um, of struggling with shitty sleep. Most of my uh, adult friends have, most of my friends that are parents have, most of my, all of my friends who run businesses have. Anybody probably with a fucking brain who sees what's going on in the world um, conflict wise, financial wise, uh, AI wise, you name it. There might be a day where you popped up at night and you're like, fuck man, things are kind of going sideways or maybe not. 
but most people I know have had issues with sleep. That is a huge lifestyle factor that plays a role in how strong you are, how lean you are, how you look, how you move, how you feel. Sleep matters. Your nutrition matters huge. Having a sense of meaning and purpose fucking matters to your health, you guys. Physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally. Having a sense of purpose and a why and finding joy in life, that affects how healthy you are. When I'm in a bad mental place and I can't get motivated and I'm dealing with some shit and I don't see a way out, it's I don't think I'm healthy those days. You know what I'm saying? Like for people who drink alcohol in excess and become depressed or sad, that plays a role. Exercise, the amount of movement you do, your social connection, your drug use, do you smoke? All of these things play a role. And again, we've talked about this before. Body fat is a measure of how healthy you are, but so is your blood pressure. So is your fasting um, glucose level. If we're talking blood pressure, if we're talking optimal, below 120, over 80. Um, fasting blood glucose for most people, um, below 100. Total blood lipids, um, less than 200 milligrams. LDL, less than 100 milligrams. Non um, HDL, less than 130 milligrams. HDL, uh, above 40 for men or 50 for women. Again, your doctor will have all of these. Hopefully, you have a nice health history. If you use somewhere like out here where we live, like a lab corp, it'll give you a, a chronological kind of order of what your blood work was the last time you pulled it. So if you, I would suggest you guys do blood work at least once a year at minimum. If you can do it twice a year, great. I tend to do it every three months. I don't pull everything every three months, but there's certain things I want to take a look at and compare. So I have a nice kind of history of what's going on based on how hard I'm training, how I'm sleeping, how I'm eating. I think those things do matter. And again, how you feel does matter. Whether your your body size is big or small, pain, like that causes you to limit your movement or range of motion when you exercise is an indicator of health. Whether you're big or small, you can have back pain, you can have knee pain, you can have shoulder pain. Fatigue that interferes with your daily life and activities is a measure of health. And again, snoring or sleep apnea that wakes you up repeatedly and leaves you feeling unrested. Those things are also playing a role here. And finally, your physical health is merely just one aspect of your overall health. We've talked about this before on a podcast with Heather. I think the podcast is called Deep Health, where we go into all the factors like your relational health, like your how connected you are to other people, existential health, your feeling of sense of meaning and purpose in life, which I just talked about, which is very important, your mental health, being alert, focused, uh, remembering things, being able to solve problems, your physical health, you know, feeling strong, like a fucking badass, being vibrant, performing and functioning well, your emotional health, you know, being able to feel and express a full range of emotions and obviously your environmental health, knowing your surroundings um, and knowing you're supported um, by the people and the things in your life. Your behaviors and actions have the most impact on your overall health not your body size, and not just your body fat percentage. So if you're somebody who's on a health journey and you're not at the the weight and the body fat you want right now, that's okay. You can not like where you're at, but you can love yourself enough to keep working forward and understand overall health is much more than just what our body fat is, how much we weigh, and what we look like. It's relational, it's existential, it's mental, it's physical, it's emotional, it's environmental. And your behaviors... And your actions have the most impact on your overall health. What you, The little things you do every day over long periods of time, not the crash diets, not the fad drugs, not the little things, and not if I'm at 12% body fat or 14% body fat, or if I weigh you know, 144 pounds or 138 pounds. All the other things I just mentioned have a much bigger impact on your overall health and well-being and how you look and move and feel than just your body size and just the percentage that it is today because it's just a snapshot of time. All those things can change. They ebb, they flow, they move, um, and that's the beauty of it. So hopefully that was a good enough breakdown for you guys. If you cared about body fat and kind of the nuances and specifics of it, obviously um, there's a sweet spot we all want to be at. And it's awesome to, to strive for that and move for that. And at the end of the day, if you are 
you know, eating real food and you're moving around with purpose and you're not abusing drugs and alcohol and you're getting good sleep and you don't hate your fucking life and you're not stressed about a bunch of dumb shit you can't control, more often than not, you're going to be healthy. You're going to have perfect days of, of eating all the time? No. You're always going to get your best workout in? No. Are you always going to be unstressed? No. Stress is a part of life. It just fucking happens. And I hate when it does too, but it's just reality. And you try to put yourself in the best, you know, mental and emotional state to handle those things. And you just keep moving forward. And you build everything around the basics, which we talked about the other day. And you just work on the low-hanging fruit. And you build a nice, strong base. And you just keep working it day after day after day. And you just refine your skills over and over and over. And no... Body fat is not the end-all, be-all. The scale is not the end-all, be-all. What you look like today exactly is not the end-all, be-all. And it is not the only indicator if somebody is healthy and fit and happy. And I would hope, as grown adults, you all know that at this point. You can't play the comparison game. You'll always lose. Because a lot of the shit you see is not always real. And it's not always what you get. And you can't always judge a book by its cover. Thank you guys for listening to me today. I am tired. Uh, Microdosing Mobility, November 20th, tomorrow. Program's already live in the app. Jeremy Scott Fitness, that app. Link is in the show notes. Join it. Do the mobility with me, you guys. I promise you, it's worth the five minutes of your time each and every day. You'll move better. You'll feel better. It'll affect your overall health. It is worth it. Do not wait on it. Don't wait till you're hurt. Don't wait till you're sore. Don't wait till you're tight. I've never met anybody who said, I wish I would have done less mobility. I wish I was less flexible and less mobile. It is just not a thing. Um, If you guys want a free sample of AG1, obviously hit me up. All the other podcast sponsors are in the show notes for you guys. Uh, If you're on Apple Podcasts, drop it a five-star, leave a comment. If you're on Spotify, drop us a five-star there as well. We'd appreciate it. Uh, Mastermind group info is in the show notes if you want to join us there. I'm probably going to come back after Thanksgiving, either Black Friday or that weekend with Heather, hopefully, to get her back on. It just makes my life easier, and it's fun um, getting to work with your wife when your wife is a badass and cool. She's cool most of the time. Um, sometimes she has her moments at home when she's not so cool, and uh, I'm sure I do too. So here we are. But for the most part, she's fun to she's fun to hang out with. She's my best friend. Um, it's nice to get her on here and just talk shit with you guys, and she has a perspective that I don't, and she's much better looking. Um, and smarter than me. So there's that. So I appreciate you guys. If I don't talk to you before or whenever you listen to this, have a fucking awesome Thanksgiving, man. Have a great Thanksgiving. I really hope you do with friends and family, whoever you can be with. And uh, we'll do our annual Thanksgiving day. You know, we call it damage control. I know a lot of people are like, well, you shouldn't do damage control on Thanksgiving. Dude, you're going to sit on your ass all fucking day and eat food. You can work out. Like, if you don't want to, don't. I don't give a shit. I'm like, but I want to. I don't want to feel like a lethargic, a bloated piece of shit and have um, diarrhea or be constipated for two days. So I like to get up and move around. So we're doing our 1,000 rep workout. It is not easy. It'll come out uh, on Instagram on Wednesday. You guys will see that. It's in the app, in the weekly workout. It's programmed for Thursday, Thanksgiving. If you guys want to do it with me, tag me. Share it with the buddy. I always love seeing your guys' times, what loads you used. And uh, it's, it's fun to work really hard. And then go be a a typical fat American for a day and and stuff your face um, full of a bunch of shit uh, you typically don't eat. But I've been way better the last couple of years. I don't overeat like I used to anymore. I just don't like to feel bad. Um, I can't, but I do still eat a lot for sure. So I'm an American. America, bro. That's what we do. So thank you guys as always. Have an amazing rest of your Sunday. Have an awesome Thanksgiving. Travel safe. Uh, And until next time, eat well, train hard, be nice to people. And please, you guys. Keep doing shit you love with people you enjoy because your life is too short not to. I'll talk to you soon. Peace.